Hello there everybody, it is me Fuser Bunny and welcome, welcome back to another Sims 4 speed building video. Okay guys, so today we are traveling to India to build one of the most famous buildings in the world, the Taj Mahal. Okay guys, I'm actually really excited because I am in love with with this building. I'm obsessed with it. Now that I know how it's going to look like in the end, I'm so freaking proud of how it turned out. It's definitely one of my favorite builds that I've ever done in The Sims 4. Okay, guys. So, um, I hope you guys stick with me till the very end. This was a very ambitious build. It's almost like 40 minutes long, but I assure you guys it'll be well worth it. Um, if you guys stick with me through the end or you can just skip to the end of the video to look at the video overview um, Which you guys also love so I'm pretty sure you guys will you know be obsessed with it just as much as I am Okay, so the Taj Mahal palace as I'm calling it is a four bedroom six bathroom residential palace okay unlike the actual Taj Mahal which is a mausoleum or like a tomb for the wife of one of the kings of India uh, this one is a house which your sims can purchase for their family and pretty much live here with everybody and some relatives cause yep it's it's freaking huge and because it's so huge I didn't have any space to fit in a garden and this is why I decided to do another lot that was somewhat Taj Mahal themed which will be reserved for the next video next week um so i hope you guys keep an eye out for the taj mahal gardens which was built in consideration for this one okay so um yep the taj mahal is as i mentioned it has four bedrooms and six bathrooms it also has um a music room banquet room game room two libraries and a sick freaking amazing staircase which is probably one of my most favorite things that I've ever done for the interior as well. It's filled with amazing furniture, really really expensive and luxurious and it'll cost your sims almost half a million to millions to purchase so it's a little bit hefty priced. Okay so I experimented a bit with how it was going to do the dome and I posted previews of this um, on my, on my um, Facebook page to give you guys like an idea of what the dome was originally supposed to look like because originally I used some roofs uh, but that was just freaking ugly like it did not look the way I wanted it to so I remembered when I did my steamboat builds a couple of months ago I remember that we had a fountain that was circular and it came with a spa day and I'm just like okay if I can enlarge this this would make an amazing dome so that is exactly what I did um, so yes, there is no custom content in this build. I don't use any custom content, um, because I love seeing what I can do with the vanilla game only. It really pushes me to be creative, and at the same time, I also get to push the game to its limits and see what it can do. And I was really happy with the result, okay? It looked so much like the Taj Mahal. I'm just like, okay, I'm just so excited for it, okay? So anyway, there we go. We have five domes in the center. We have some minarets later on that we're going to be building as well. So yeah, as I mentioned earlier, this is a pretty ambitious build. Now, usually I would save ambitious builds for a house building series instead that I do in real time as opposed to when I, what I would usually do as a speed build. But this time I, I felt like doing a speed build because, I don't know, this was the perfect thing to kickstart the holiday. You know, it's December and there's going to be a bunch of really, really awesome things in store. So I hope you guys stay tuned on my channel and really keep track and keep updated because I have some really, really exciting things planned for you guys. And yep, this is going to be like, a super super fun thing to kickstart my favorite month which is the month of December okay so yep there we go um pretty much uh of course most of the outside is inspired by the Taj Mahal itself however there are some changes 
uh, and stuff like that. I also discovered that we can increase the size of the archways or like the doors and the windows. I discovered that we can increase the size um, with the control and bracket keys. And I'm just like, okay, that would make a perfect archway. So, you know, all these little things one by one slowly contribute to making it look as much like the Taj Mahal as I can because that's usually what I do I would you know try to be faithful with the source material okay so this as you guys can see right now is a technique that I got from the sim supply he made this in one of his builds before and he used um tables to fill in the gaps inside of the half walls to make it look like a full wall and I'm just like okay I'm borrowing that technique that would be perfect okay so yep as you guys can see right now it looks so much like the Taj Mahal already the silhouette looks amazing I'm just trying to experiment here with some you know with some wall paintings and stuff so yeah it's actually been a while since I've done like an ambitious build for speed builds um the last one I did was I believe that one was for the Mirage Tranquility Center which was the build I did for a spa venue for the release of the sims for spa day and um so yeah it's been a couple of months and i do try to put a little bit of variety in the content that i make so i because you guys would notice that recently i've been doing a lot of really medium-sized builds last week i did a collab video which was super super fast it was like eight minutes long so um yep yeah. i've been working on this for a couple of weeks already though and if you guys follow me on facebook you would have already known way 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 before i post this video and I published this video on YouTube I've been posting um, progress reports and to show you guys um, how things are going and how I'm moving forward with this let's play okay um, so for some strange reason the game didn't want to automatically make these levels so you guys will see that is a major problem that I'm dealing with later because I spent so much time um, creating all these levels and stuff it's it's a mess and it messes up the trim on the outside which i actually had a hard time keeping um but i really really like how the trims looked so there we go and of course we're working on the four minarets of the taj mahal and yeah i pretty much use the exact same thing you guys will notice that there is absolutely no roof to this build there is a floor and these fountains and these will serve as roofs it's a little bit awkward because when i place tested this lot the fountains still spray some water um but i you know it's fine it really doesn't um take away that much from the building itself and it is a stunning building the proportions look great um you know the colors look amazing especially in the sunset we are building this on a lot in willow creek that's facing the ocean so sunset looks amazing and there we go um also by the way i did some editing as well uh because of course it's a pretty ambitious build so i had to kind of edit a little bit of footage out um which i know you guys really don't like me editing things but uh <laughs> if i didn't edit it it would have been an hour long video and I'm just like nope nobody's gonna watch it I think I was able to keep in most of the things anyway the only things that I edited out are like pretty much me adding in some random clutter items and replacing some things even when I made mistakes I still kept it in and you guys will see a lot of that happen as we move forward with the interior okay so basically um the rooms in this palace are quite huge the centermost room is as you can see it's a two-story um atrium type of thing that houses or that has the main staircase that leads to the upstairs it's a very very grand sort of reception area and stuff that we're working on right now and pretty much um i use that same technique um that I've used quite a lot actually in my previous builds. Um, when I build like exotic buildings, I use arches instead of doorways, um, which I feel like give a lot of openness 
to the building. And I think that's great because India has amazing climate. You know, it's it has an amazing, beautiful sunrise and sunsets and stuff like that. Okay. So um, one more thing that I was so happy with that I was able to do is I was able to use a lot of color for the interiors. So usually I would go for something a little bit more safe and a little bit more, um, you know, a, a little bit more conservative i guess but this time i was able to go all out rainbow color scheme freaking amazing um i did watch a lot of bollywood films when i was growing up especially like when i was a teenager uh, my favorite one and this is for my indian viewers probably because pretty much they're gonna be the only people who understand i watched marigold a journey through india and um one of my favorites was salam ishq uh, with Salman Khan. Actually, Salman Khan was also in Marigold and stuff. He's one of the biggest actors ever, not only in India, even internationally. He's so famous. And he was with Priyanka Chopra, which was the former Miss World in, um, Salami Ishq. So I love that. I love Bollywood movies because I love the music, you know, I love the music. I love the clothes and I love the beautiful people as well. So that's great. Okay. So you guys just saw me work on the entrance foyer. And then right now we are working on the staircase area, which I was able to do a really, really cool thing with these wall decorations over here. I was able to enlarge them and make it look somewhat like a decorative shelf. Uh, so I, I, I also placed like, um, a lantern inside of it, which I was like, okay, this is so awesome. I don't know, the whole vibe of the place kind of takes me to Arabian Nights, you know, Aladdin, you know, Lantern, Genie, and stuff like that. Okay, so pretty much Bollywood was my main inspiration, but I was also inspired by Sex in the City too. And yes, they went to Abu Dhabi, which technically was not in India. Uh, but I still loved it. That's why, um, a lot of the interiors were inspired by that. By the way, Sex in the City 2 takes place in the United Arab Emirates. However, it was filmed in Morocco. So, you know, that very Middle Eastern vibe, I still kept it and stuff like that. And I was really happy with how it turned out, actually. It felt freaking exotic. And I'm just, I, I, I don't know. It's just very different from the builds that I normally do. So, um, that's probably why I love it so much. Okay, so right now I'm trying to experiment with the clutter items and stuff, but none of them were working because I didn't want to overwhelm the wall sculptures that we already had. So I just kept it simple and just left them as it is. Okay, and this is a little bit different from how I would normally do things because we're already working on the second floor. This is somewhat an important room because I kind of consider this as like the throne room. I did call the lot the Taj Mahal Palace, so I felt like having a throne room would only be appropriate so I placed it on the second floor because I don't know I just felt really grand you know seeing the guests or the ambassadors ascend the grand staircase and like the Maharaja sitting on his grand throne which by the way I felt you guys will see that when you research India and like the kings in India and stuff they sit on a chair that's kind of like a lounge because it's like a very long chair that almost looks like a bed that's why the, the chair upstairs looks like that okay so pretty much right now we are working on the dining room and this is so funny I would have edited this out but I decided to keep it in so you guys will see it um but this is not the final location of the dining room I will actually move the entire thing um, in the room behind the staircase because I felt like that was a more appropriate place because the dining room is a pretty formal area if you think about it. So, you know, um, placing it in like a formal location is a great thing. You know, it's it kind of... I don't know, it just, it just felt right to place it, um, along the line of the formal rooms and stuff. So yeah. Okay. So I will move the entire thing, furnitures and stuff. I know. Okay. I'm pretty sure you guys will tell me, well, you know, you could have just moved the room and stuff, but I didn't want to because it would mess up the outside and the outside took me an hour to build. So <laughs> yeah. Um, Anyway, speaking of how much time it took me to build, um, it took me about four hours to do the 
overall builds from start to finish. That is how much footage I edited and I compressed and sped up. But, you know, the brainstorming before building, figuring out what the dome was going to look like and stuff like that, that, that wasn't recorded. That's not part of the speed builds, but, um, that's kind of like the behind the scenes action. So it took me a while. Okay. So, um, yeah, there, there we go. We're finally moving the dining room. So, <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, once again, I could have edited this out, but I know how much you guys appreciate me keeping in as much stuff as I can. Um, so it just shows you how much I change my mind every time I do these builds and stuff like that. So there we go. And I also love using these palm trees actually, because, um, I feel like it fell, I feel like it, <laughs> I feel like it filled in the space really, really well. Uh, they were quite large and they occupied quite a lot of space, which is great because in this palace where we had huge, gigantic rooms, uh, we need as much clutter as we can. Speaking of clutter, though, um, you guys will notice that this build is relatively sparsely furnished compared to my other builds. There's a couple of reasons for that. The first one is just the amount of time it will take me to literally personalize each and every embellishment. It's going to make this literally like a 10 hour long speed build, which nobody's ever going to watch. And um, so, yeah, I did make the decision to um, furnish it sparsely because I felt like it was, just, it was just right. You know, it's not exactly you know, unfurnished, but compared to my other builds, it is relatively sparsely and loosely furnished. Okay, this is what I was talking about. The struggles that I have with the rooms and the levels, which were a nightmare. So you guys can see me try to fix it because they kind of messed up the situation with um, the trims on the outside. They weren't behaving properly, but I was able to um, do that as well. I'll do a couple more rooms later on because I didn't notice that um, I had some broken rooms and stuff like that so we'll be doing a lot of damage repair and it took me a lot of time as well so yeah that's unfortunate but you guys will see a lot of it later on anyway so yeah okay so this is the first bedroom in the house that we're decorating i love the colors this was intended to be a guest bedroom that's why it's downstairs um it even has like its own hallway and stuff so okay all the bedrooms have their own toilet and bathroom and all the bedrooms have their own walk-in closet how freaking insane is that can i just get a hallelujah from you guys yes how awesome is it like i mean it's pretty grand to have you know a walk-in closet for all the bathrooms so, i mean for all the bedrooms which is quite awesome um okay i haven't talked about this at all in this build but i love the choice of tile that i made i love the floor tiles because it gives it like um you know, that Middle Eastern vibe, which I really, really like. Um, so I used a lot of bright colors, especially for the floors. And, um, you know, I, I feel like I used it just right. You know, there's only two tiles that I used all throughout the lot. And because I didn't use so many, I was able to give it a little bit of order and not make it too much chaotic because, um, I did play test the house and it was amazing to play in. You know, you can clearly see all the items. The Sims didn't have any trouble getting around. So, you know, not cluttering all the items and stuff and um, just making intelligent decisions, you know, just thinking properly about how this build will be played by you guys is pretty much what inspired me to do what I did, which is go for a little bit more of a simpler build and something that was easy to play and also very, very beautiful to look at. Um, I love the chandeliers. I've never talked about it. So let's talk about it now. Uh, so these chandeliers, I layered them and I'm just in love. I love it. I love the look. I love the colors. And the fact that I chose chandeliers that weren't that bright because these chandeliers were actually really dim. Um... So if you actually layer them, then you get just the right amount of light. Okay. Once, ag once again, doing some, some damage control over here. Cause yeah, it, it was a nightmare. It was like, it took me so much time. I'm just like, Oh my goodness. What have I done? I wasn't paying attention when I was doing the outside. 
So I ended up with this really um, messy interior. But, you know, you guys can see me address all the issues individually, one by one. And yeah, in the end, it this turned out to be one of my favorite builds. So there you go. I think this is my favorite because of just the colors, you know, the, the way that I furnished it, which wasn't too overwhelming. Um, I feel like I did everything just right, which is a very, very difficult thing to do. Uh, cause sometimes I have a tendency to overly decorate. Uh, so, um, I did try to pull myself back because I didn't want to overwhelm you guys. Um, especially when, if you plan to play on this lot. Um, think about it. It has four bedrooms, six bathrooms, all these grand rooms. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to be overwhelming either way. So I feel like, making the furnishings a little bit lighter and kind of sticking to what's just necessary is a great way to keep it um, focused. There we go. I think that's the key word of everything. I just wanted to make things focused. Okay. So you guys can make, or you guys can see me um do like a guest bathroom over there. There are actually two guest bathrooms in this and both of them are right next to each other. Um, yeah, maybe one can be for the men and one can be for the women. Both of them have the same exact thing anyway. So, okay. Right now we're working on the living room of the house. So this is quote unquote the formal living room. Um, so there's a lot of seating areas in this house. So I don't see a need to have a living room, but it's, you know, it's, it's a basic requirement for every house. Every house has a living room. So. We have to put one. And I think it's also a great use of space. You know, the fact that it's on the side kind of makes it feel a little bit more informal uh, and stuff like that. So that that was great. And by the way, I'm obsessed with the colors. I'm just like, yes, I love the color schemes that I used because they were like so unpredictable, you know. Um, every time you think of India, you think of really, really strong, intense, spicy colors. But for the furniture, I used a lot of pastel colors. And if you actually look at Bollywood films and interiors in India, especially like during special occasions like weddings, a lot of people tend to go for a more pastel you know pastel fabrics pastel you know cushions and rugs and things like that and I think the pastel color scheme for the interior also ties in with the Taj Mahal because if you look at the Taj Mahal it is entirely white you know so if I made a white exterior and you know the interior kind of has to communicate together with that and you know both of them have to form like some sort of relationship with each other otherwise it would be you know not thought out which is not how I want to do things so definitely I worked hard um trying to make the interior relate with the exterior as well and I feel like I'm very successful in doing so uh, so yeah there we go Oh, okay. So yeah, we just, we're finishing off with the kitchen. And I have to say that that is one of my favorite kitchens that I've ever made. I love the shape of it. It's so unusual. And I also love the colors that I use for the kitchens. Um, and of course, we're not working on it now. So there's no way you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's see here. Right now we are working on the drawing room. Now I introduced another new color over here. I, I use this kind of sea foam green color which once again, I'm obsessed with all the colors that you use for the walls and for the floors. I'm just so happy with this lot. I mean, I, I know I keep singing myself praises, but come on, you guys, isn't this awesome? Uh, so yeah, I was really happy with the color choices. I felt like it was really fresh and, um, I will unlock, um, one item over here using the ignore gameplay unlocks entitlement sheet. <laughs> I will unlock a piano and I, I'm obsessed with that piano because it comes in the exact same color that we have, that, that we have with the walls. And I'm just like, yes, this is perfect. There we go. That is perfect. See, see how it ties in everything together. And, you know, uh, so right now I'm just looking at the proportions and things, maybe throwing in a, couple of clutter items and finally we are working on the second floor now the second floor has three additional bedrooms it has the master bedroom for the emperor or the king or the sultan whatever you want to call him so that's this is it 
Um, the emperor has a very, very, very large bedroom on the center of the lot, and it's very grand, and it's filled with some really, really awesome furniture, gorgeously stunning colors, and I don't know, really, really awesome. Okay, so um, you guys will see me use a lot of earth tones for the walls, and you know, I mentioned earlier that I used a lot of really spice, and I mean, you know, the colors of India were very spicy ish uh so yeah that's why i kind of used a lot of earth tones as well of course the um the emperor's bedroom is this beautiful golden color uh because of course he's the emperor he has to have the most royal looking bedroom um by the way one thing that i haven't mentioned is that i used a lot of candles as well with this lot candles that came with um spa day i felt like that also added in you know a nice little exotic touch you know very indian middle eastern arabic touch um so yeah Lots of candles and lots of lanterns because, you know, one advice that I should give you guys when you are building your homes is that try to use various sources of light, not just rely on ceiling lights to get lights, you know, or to light up your rooms. Because, you know, if you put different sources of light, like on the ground, on the walls, it'll give your rooms much more depth and much more dimension to them as opposed to just having a ceiling light. So that's that. Once again, using the same formula that I did downstairs to do these um, foyer type of things or hallways. Because, uh, yep. Yeah. So basically, it's just copying the same exact items, the same color schemes, and literally the same things. Okay. And right now, we're working on the Emperor's Entry Hall, I guess. I don't know. I felt like this was a very insignificant room, but I feel like having like an entry hall for the emperor's bedroom is gonna make it feel even more grander okay so the room that we're working on right now is actually the banquet room which is a little bit weird because it's on the second floor but what i had in mind for the banquet room was actually um so, you know, it's it was for the family, pretty much. So the family can hang out, grab some buffet things. You know, there is, like, uh, the banquet room has um, these items, which came with luxury party, uh, the fountain, the chocolate fountain, and the buffet table. So that's that. And it is right next to the game room. So I felt like it was a really casual space only for the closest members of the family. Of course, the game room doesn't have anything. It literally has a gaming table and that is pretty much it because uh, we don't have that much stuff in the game as of now. So, uh, yep. And then we are working on, let's see here, what are we going to work on next? Okay, so right now we're working on the two additional bedrooms that I have. They can be guest rooms, they could be anything. So the one bedroom has the exact same color scheme as the one beneath it. It even has the same furniture and it has the same um, layout as well. Actually, all the bedrooms except for the master bedroom have the same layout because I'm just like, okay, okay, I don't need to reinvent the wheel because it's it's not broken. I'm pretty sure that's not how you're supposed to say it, but no need to reinvent the wheel. I forgot that quote. I forgot how it went. But anyway, uh, and then we have another bedroom that's blue. Um, so yeah, if you have a really special guest, you can put them here so they feel a little bit more appreciated and because they get a, a more unique bedroom. Or this could also be a bedroom for the crown prince. Now, my choices for the color schemes that we have for the bedrooms were done um, to pretty much complement the beds. I know, I know, I keep complaining about the beds and the color schemes, but there's just no way to avoid it. I hate the existing color schemes that we have for the beds because it's very difficult to match it with anything that we already have in the game. And you know, if it was any other type of furniture, then that would be fine, you know, but these are beds, beds, which are the focal points of the bedrooms. So they have to match somehow, you know, rugs or curtains or walls. I try to match them somehow. So I had a really, really tough time, but I feel like everything matched perfectly and looked great. Okay. So anyway, this bedroom, which is exactly a replica of the one underneath it has a different 
layout because it has two single beds, okay? The one beneath it has um, one double bed, so technically they can still accommodate the same amount of people, but I guess the other one can play host to maybe um, two friends or two kids and stuff i don't know it's your guys's choice you can do whatever you want um i also used um another item that i used quite a lot were these um what are these things called these um dividers i guess uh so i used those a lot though the dividers looked pretty oriental like the silhouette of these dividers looked a lot like the taj mahal because they're kind of like pointed arch uh so i really like that okay right now we're working on the master bathroom and of course plopping in a couple of dividers just to give our emperor some privacy because he does get some floor to ceiling windows so he can just you know close the drapes or maybe move the divider to cover the the bathtub and stuff so yeah of course this is the largest bathroom and um in order to access it you have to pass by um the walk-in closet for the emperor so you know it's very grand I, can you guys believe it the emperor's room or the emperor's suite is comprised of four separate rooms and stuff so that's great i love how i used the diagonal space um i feel like it made the room feel a little bit different and of course i had to throw in that huge painting over there so that the emperor can look at the painting and pretend like he's in Italy because that's the subject of the painting, okay? And now we're just pretty much working on the outside. Once again, there is unfortunately no landscaping because as you guys can see, there's absolutely no space. Uh, but I was able to do some really intricate mosaic work, I guess, with the floors. Um, so you guys can see right now that there is like some sort of pattern to the platform or the foundation that the palace is in. And um, there are like the grassy bits on the ground, you guys can see. I will put some urns and like, yeah, some urns. And then I also plop in some flowers on those urns just to give it some foliage at least, right? Because, I don't know. Plus, I love that technique. I actually used that technique for the first time in the spills. I've never seen anyone do it. So anyway, you guys probably don't get what I'm talking about since you can't really see it right now. But just give me a couple of seconds. It'll be there. Okay. So yep, pretty much trying to be inventive with the patterns and stuff. You know, mosaics are kind of a trademark of the architecture of India. So there we go. And of course, I chose a really, really dark grass um, because I felt like it contrasted really well with the bright coloration that we have, especially for the outside of the palace itself. Okay. And of course, I had to plop in a couple of fountains just to pretty much add in a couple more interesting things on the outside and also to somewhat reflect you know, the main entryway to the palace. Okay, so there we go. This is what I was mentioning to you guys earlier. I placed some urns, and then I felt like placing a plant on the inside would be perfect. So um, I did experiment with a couple of sizes and a couple of plants, but I settled on this one, actually, which I felt like, you know, was the, it was the same color as the grass, which was great. So I'm just like, okay, this ties in so well with the color of the terrain and it also ties in with the Taj Mahal since it has like white flowers and stuff so there we go and I placed the urn thing around the palace itself so you know at least it's some sort of attempt to have some landscaping right uh but yeah I didn't want to overwhelm the build you know it, it's just right you know I love the reason why I love it so much it's just it's it's just the right amount of you know it's just the right amount of pump and it's also the right amount of holding back to create something that's absolute perfection for me definitely definitely one of my favorite builds ever so yeah pretty much adding in a couple more lights to you know light up the outside and stuff like that it looks stunning on the outside especially the domes look absolutely beautiful at night so anyway there you guys can see it uh, anyway i hope you guys download this house all the links will be in the description as usual so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the screenshots okay guys okay so 
Moving on to the screenshot, you guys can see both first and second floors of the palace. And you guys can also see the huge chandeliers. They look amazing in game. And I hope you guys enjoy playing this house because it plays really well. Okay. Once again, all the links will be in the description if you guys want to download. Okay. So anyway, that is going to be it for the commentary part of this video. I hope you guys enjoy this build. It's definitely one of my favorite builds and I'm so, so proud of it. And we're moving on to the best part, which is the video overview, which you guys will see in just a second after I do my outro. So anyway, that's going to be it for the commentary part of this video. Once again, please don't forget to hit that like, favorite, and subscribe button because it really does help out the channel a lot. You all have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the video and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.